a bridge for the living, Larkin called it, in the cantata written for its opening. Not a title he chose himself, and he managed only 40 lines, not the hundreds he'd been asked for. A local industrialist bullied me into it, he said. I wish a thousand times over I'd said no. Still, there are lovely things in the poem, like his image of the bridge as a swallow fall and rise, or of the wind playing on it like a harp. When you're standing underneath, it's percussion you hear, the swish of car tires and drumming of trucks. But you can see what he meant, the vertical strings, the curved upper cable, the rivets like tuning pins. And when fog lifts from the river in a swirl of white robes, it could be the ascension and angels sitting like quavers on the bars of heaven's gate. When the Danes stepped from their boats, water poured over their boots. The River Don was good for trade, but the land alongside was swamp, till Vermoyden came from Holland to drain the fens and marshes. Where there'd been peat, peasants grew peas. Result! Except King Charles grabbed the best land, the bastard. Years later, in the opener to the English Civil War, the Bolshe locals took revenge on Charles when he tried to enter Hull to steal its arsenal and found the city gates shut firm against him. Sod the Royals is a mantra you still hear in these parts today. Sod the government too, since it won't invest in flood defence. A man from Hessel died the other year when his foot got trapped in a storm drain. At every village we pass, the water goes with us, beyond the banks, across the fields, over our heads. <laughs> 